inviting us and our staff. Uh, we're the new Grizzly Knights, our uh, defensive staff. Uh, a little bit about us. Uh, we're a Division three school. Uh, we got an 850 enrollment thereabouts each year. We're from the southeast part of the state. Uh, we compete in the Woodland Conference, which is actually a 14-team conference, uh, two divisions. So we are in the West Division. Um, our staff, as it's configured right now, has been together for about uh, four years. Um, Matt Kern, our head coach, has been our head coach for four years. Uh, last three seasons, uh, our regular uh, season record has been 24-3. Uh, we've, we've qualified for the playoffs uh, the last three years, and uh, we're fortunate enough to get to Madison. Uh, and we're beat by an outstanding Rice Lake team in the finals. Um, and uh, we had a good group of kids, so uh, we got a good thing going uh, at our program. Uh, again, my name's Sean Crowley. I'm the defensive coordinator. I've been at Eisenhower since 2003. Uh, I coach the linebackers. Uh, Jeff Kazbowski, who's our tech guy over here, Jeff and I share the linebacker job. Uh, work, or working with the linebackers, uh, we work together, or uh, he'll do the outside, sometimes I'll do the inside linebackers. Uh, John Kazabowski is here, John, uh, his father. John's a, a longtime coach in the uh, southeast part of the state. Uh, he uh, partners with our head coach, Matt Kern, in uh, working with our defensive line. Uh, Jeff and John both coach the uh, JV defense also for us. Uh, Chris Lidwin is our defensive backs coach. And uh, Chris is also our special teams uh, coordinator for varsity and, uh, and JV, so he, he's in charge of both of those areas. But it's kind of who we are. Um, go ahead, Coach. Uh, we're going to start with, we're going to do this in three, it's, it's a drill-based presentation. So uh, Coach John's going to start out with uh, some D-line drills. Thanks, Coach. Morning, fellas. Uh, just looking at our philosophy. We look at this as, as a possibility for everybody. All the line coaches work together. That means myself, Coach Kern, and our two offensive line coaches work together. So we have four sets of eyes working with our kids. And uh, as you can see, be accountable, do your job. you got to pursue correctly. If you don't pursue correctly, all this other stuff that we're talking about is out the window. You've got to be able to do this. Game tackle, rip the ball, and we stress physicality. Okay, all of our drills are done with shields. Make sure if you're going to have them, buy some shields that have the straps on them, and we'll show that in one of our drills here as we go along. Okay, I believe in a lot of ideas with our hands. If you're a defensive coach, you better be using your hands. Everybody I talk to, you got to be using your hands. Yes, you got to, and you got to be quick. We were talking last night on the way up here, just comparing our last three teams, how much quicker we have been in the last two years because of the drills that we've done and how we're putting it together. And that helps with having four sets of eyes because we can correct those kids right now. Because if I'm running a drill and I don't see someone in the back, there's two, three other coaches standing around saying, move, buddy, you get better, come on. Okay, Okay, so the first one we're gonna get into is our run drill. I'm not going to read all this, you know, being a teacher for a lot of years, I'm not going to get into that. But the big thing is the hand quickness, okay? We start paired up with each other, so now I'm going to show you the tape, okay? And sorry, Rice Lake, I just used you as an example, because you guys had a great set of linemen, man, those kids were good. Holy cow, our kids had a great time playing against them. Here's the drill. What we do is we start off with hand reaction, okay? I will... Set a letter, so we use the letter R. And the kid's going to do the letter R, palms out, nice stance, and he's going to repeat it. And we come back, 30 seconds, and we rotate. We do this as a pre-practice. We want the kid's hands to be quick. You're playing defense and your hands aren't quick, you're not going anywhere. Okay? So that's the drill that we will perform. We'll get two, three, four, five guys in line. Everybody will have a shield, and we'll just switch. And we'll go through the drill in that process. Again, be prepared to correct the kids where their hands are, okay? Remember, your hands want to be here. You want your palms not out here, but you want your thumbs up so your elbows stay into your body, okay? We have some big defensive linemen. They go like this, guess what's happening? Our offensive guys are getting their hands in there and driving them up. So keep your thumbs and index fingers up. That keeps those elbows inside. 
Okay, so that's the first one. You can do that at any time. That's a great warm-up drill. You can have the kids doing that at home and mom's pillows and stuff. They love that. But once we get the season started, we do our hand quickness drills. And I have a number of different ones that I do all the time. Okay? Next. Okay, the next one is a defensive man attacking the wrist of the offensive man. Now, I picked this up a few years ago. Coach Kern mentioned at the end of two seasons ago that we needed a better pass rush. So I was out on the board trying to find places <laughs> to do things that we could make our pass rush better. Okay? So I thought the only way that we could do that is talk to people. And we're all here together. We cheat, we steal, we take from everybody else, right? Well, hopefully this one will take with you. This is a good one. Okay? We start in a good football stance. And what we promote here is that if I'm a pass block and I'm, I'm setting up, my hands come up here, right? Okay? If my hands come up here, I want to find those wrists right now. So as I come out of my stance, I'm looking for those wrists. My elbows are in. I'm trapping the wrist. If I can get those wrists, I've beaten those big linemen. Because most schools that we play now, the defensive tackles are the big fat guys. And then as soon as they open up, they're in trouble. Now if I got the wrist trap, now we can get a pass rush off of them. So that's what we work on. So we'll trap that, they'll come out of our stance, boom, we'll just trap. So what we have the guy do is come down just like he's pass blocking. His hands are going to be up here, right? That's where they're going to be. That's where we want to trap him. So we want to come from the ground up to his wrist and find him. Okay, so that's the first part that we do. Okay, the second part, yeah. okay. If you're going to be an offensive lineman like Rice Lake and they come out and they attack your legs and so on and so forth, where are their arms going to be, coach? They're down here, right? They're coming off the ball. So how do you trap that? Wrist down. You take your thumb and you plant it right on that wrist and you take them down. And now you can work with them. Okay? So if he goes down, I go down with them. I can trap. Now I can get my run through, as I call it, to get to the backfield. So those two drills help us to do what we need to do. We can pass rush and we can run, run block. We can take care of both at the same time. And again, very simple. You can do this for 30 seconds time. You can do the same thing. You know, you can vary it however you want to do it, depending on the amount of kids you have, the size of the squad you have, and so on and so forth. So that's how we get that done. That's a shield. That's the next one up. But the wrist should be planted. Okay? Thumbs. Down and they're running, thumbs up when they're pass blocking. And if there's any questions, feel free to stop me and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, next drill is called the shield and hand placement drill. And the reason I use this is these are the cheapest things that you can get that will help you. You have your kids grab the bottom, you use the straps. What a better aiming point for your linemen is are these straps right here. If you can get their hands on there, you can control most of the people. Okay, so that's what we work with. And we're going to work with a demonstration where we had our kids film these, so uh, it's a lot easier for us to explain. So let's see the drill. Okay, he's going to come out of his stance. Okay, he's going to find the handles. He's going to take two steps, boom, boom, okay, and then we're going to stop him. Okay, and what you do then is you make sure that your arms are locked out, your base is down here, your eyes are ahead, and you just walk two steps. That's all we want to do first of all, introductory drill, okay? How do you know that? You do both sides. Oh, yeah? And the best thing is if you got, you know, four, five, six shields, line them all up, you can watch them with four coaches, boys, that nice. <laughs> boom, 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 right down the line, you can watch each kid, and you can correct. So if I'm correcting here, the other coaches can still be working with the kids over here. So we stress that as an important part, that helping each other out. And then just a part of that, for the offensive side, I will go over and do the tight ends and help with the tackles and offensive people. So it, it helps. It really helps to rotate around. But this is a great drill for positioning. You know, um, I remember many, many years ago, we had an old one-man sled at one of the schools I worked at, and they had the old frame on it, and the kids used to grab that iron, 
you know, run that old one-man sled. Well, that, you know, those are days past. Kids will like doing kind of stuff like that. So the shields are, are the best, okay? And then finally, our progression is very simple. We now put it all together, okay? So we use our quick hands. We use grabbing the wrist. We do our power step, okay? And then we throw I call throwing out the trash, okay? So as I step in and I take my two power steps, I'm going to pull those straps, take them to my hip pocket, and throw them away and then rip under, either way. And the purpose is to turn his shoulder so I can get in the backfield and locate the football. So as I come out, I lock on, one, two, power step, pull, turn, rip under. So that's how we put everything together. And again, it seems to be very feasible. It's very usable. It doesn't take a lot of time. The kids understand it. And as you can see here, our, our two eighth grade kids, no, I'm just kidding. These are our seniors. <laughs> uh, these are the kids that, you know, we worked with this already. I'll show it again one more time, Jeff. Okay, notice his hands. That kid's off balance now. And the bigger that guy is, you get him standing back here. Now I take my two power steps. Boy, I turned him, and I'm past you right now. That helps quarterback. But that also helps on the run. And then what we'll do later on in the year is we'll add a running back. So as we step, rip, and now he'll take off. We'll come over with the trap, make the tackle that way. Okay? So what we do then is we put it all together. Those are the four drills that we do to progress. So we have included hands. We included pass, we included run, and then you can add a tackle at the end. You have all four of those in a very short period of time. Now the nice thing is we get a chance to practice, okay? Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll flip. We each have a side about an hour on each side where we get that going, and we rotate and we get a lot of stuff done. You know, what do we have last year, 70-some uh, kids coach? Yeah. You know, I had about 18, 20, 25, 24 linemen. So we just kept rotating the kids through. We just kept working them. The sophomores do the same as the varsity. We start to get the freshmen orientated and so on and so forth. So basically, that's my progression to get them started. This is early season. This is when I get them started right away. And then we can progress to our other drills and so on and so forth. So that's my part of our defense. And again, we've exceeded. You saw some of the totals that we have. Um, we're well on our way. Hopefully there's something there that you can get, anything that you need to ask or anything we can get to. But those are the four that I progress with. And it's starting, and it fits at the end to everybody. Anything? Great, thanks. Coach? OK, thanks, Coach. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, a line, linebacker drills to share with you guys. Uh, and, and again, some of these things you guys may be doing already, uh, but I'll share with you how, how we teach it, how we do it. And essentially what I'm going to talk about is, is our block defeat or what we call our shock and shed progression. Uh, and, and we'll divide this into three shock drills we progress through, three shed drills, and then three combination drills. Um, you know, we're trying to give these kids some tools to defeat some blocks. You guys, we all do the same thing. Uh, in our system, we're primarily a four linebacker system, so all our linebackers uh, will go through these drills. Uh, they'll follow uh, this progression from first contact days till the, you know, or some version of these drills till the end of the season. Uh, we'll use, Coach talked about the spike sled. We'll use the spike sled for these drills in as much as we will the shields. We use the shields more. Uh, we, all our demos will be with the shields, but we do use both of those uh, for these drills. Uh, so again, we'll show the, the, uh, the shields. Um, three sections, three drills for each. Go ahead, Coach. Okay, first up part is we're talking about shock or delivering a blow. We want to get guys to be aggressively taking on blockers to create immediate separation, staying square, and coming downhill to the football. Uh, the first drill we teach uh, is called on the knees, uh, and uh, what we do is we have we work in partners. The linebacker is on his knees, knees together, heels together. Coach, you want to go to that? And we'll go, we'll, we'll go right through that. 
and just hold it right there. Okay, we'll, we'll partner up like this with the shields. The linebacker's got his heels together, butt on his knees, hands in the holsters, uh, on his hips. And what we're looking for here is, is, is uh, a strong strike and uh, combined with hip extension and to get that upper body um, extending into the uh, blocker. Uh, go ahead, coach, and show that. We want him to finish on his chest so we get full hip extension. We're looking for uh, thumbs to the sky when we create contact. Um, we want an incline bench press attack with our hands. And we want to finish with, with uh, that type of hip extension. Is our other linebacker, same thing. It's a little bit better. But we're trying to work on the upper body, creating that explosion, that hand strike, upward hand strike and hip extension. Okay, coach, next one. All right, so next one is what we call two-point. Uh, it's virtually the same drill, but we're starting in our two-point linebacker stance. Well, uh, same thing, linebacker in his stance, hands in his holsters. Uh, uh, on cue, he'll hand strike, thumbs up, um, bench press. We want to work to get the crouch <coughs> belly underneath the bottom of the blocker's mask so we have proper leverage. Um, and then we want to finish the drill by buzzing the feet. We always want to create active feet in our drills, and that's how we'll finish, uh, how we finish that one. Go ahead with that one, Coach. So on cue, we want to finish with the feet. Creating separation, we want the crown of his helmet underneath the bottom of the face mask. Good incline bench press, thumbs up. Active feet, creating separation. Good football position. Same thing. Coach, you can go to the next one. Yeah. All right, third one is a, is a um, two-point locate. All we're doing in this drill, this only thing we're adding is you can see the coaches behind there. Uh, on the first cue, the uh, linebacker will attack the shield, buzz his feet, and then uh, he'll look to the coach. The coach will just simply flash a number. He'll verbalize the number. What we're trying to replicate is as you're gaining separation with the blocker, you're starting to look and locate and find the football. So we're working on their eyes and locating the ball while they're creating separation. So that's all the, all the add-on to this drill is. Go ahead, Coach. Flash a number, and then he just verbalizes it. Um, and then I'll, I'll change spots. Sometimes I'll be in different places they won't know, so they gotta got to uh, react, um, active feet, Verbalize the number, so we're starting to get their eyes looking towards the football. Same thing here, we're at a different angle, just keeping active feet, creating that separation, extension, verbalizing, locating, finding the ball. Okay, coach. All right, second piece of the, uh, these drills is the, sh the, the uh, shed. We're talking about disengaging from the blocker. We try to uh, give these, uh, all our linebackers specific techniques or a tool we want them to use to use again, as Coach had said, using their hands to create separation and disengaging from a blocker. Uh, we call it a steer and rip technique. You guys probably do it or, or maybe heard of it. This is what we, we like it. This is what we emphasize. And what we talk about is turning the wheel. And what we're looking at is once we have created the shock, how we want to shed is if the ball, our, our, the, our arm to the ball carrier's side, we want to turn the wheel. Turn the wheel away from the ball carrier and rip with the opposite one as we separate to get to the ball carrier. So we're turning the wheel away from the ball carrier and ripping through the blocker to the, uh, to the ball. Um, all right, so we'll show you the steer drill. Um, we'll, we'll start in this lockout position, thumbs up, good athletic position. We will predetermine what side we want them to go. This is very early in the season. We want them to get used to using their hands and, and, and learning that steer and rip technique to shed the blocker. So go ahead, coach, and show the drill. He already knows it's going to be left, and he finishes. What that is is that's just a tackle to air we call club up. Um, the reason why we have them jump is we just have them exaggerate their hip extension on a tackle. So that's just something we do to finish a lot of drills. So you see the first cue will be he'll buzz his feet. The second cue, he will steer to a predetermined side, rip, and club up the air. We're exaggerating things. We're, we're working on drills just to kind of get their body mechanics used to 
that steer technique and finishing with a claw up the air tap. So that's our steer drill. Predetermine what side is going to go. If your mic's going to go to the other side, so we're serving. We'll, we'll work obviously both sides. Um, we like to, especially early in the year, have these guys do the drill slow to form. A lot of times they want to get rid of that shield right away and just push away from it. We've got to force them to steer it. We want to see that shield twist. We want to see that back arm rip. See, that was a weak kind of rip there by Mike. But what we want to do is try to do these slow form. These kids always want to, you guys know how it works. They want to do these drills so fast. We've got to kind of slow them down to get through that so they get used to that hand mechanics. So that's our steer drill. Second one is uh, a steer and locate. Uh, the same drill, except on the second cue, the coach is going to signal to a ball carrier behind the, uh, the shield to go left or right. So now what the, the linebacker has to do is he's in lockout. The coach will be behind the linebacker. The running back is, is uh, about four or five yards facing the, uh, line, uh, facing the linebacker. The coach will tell the back which way to go. So on the first cue, he'll buzz his feet. On the second cue, the, the running back will go left or right. So now he's got to turn which way. He's got to steer the proper way. So he's got to read where that running back is going and then steer and, uh, and locate the ball carrier and tackle. So now we don't predetermine. He's got to read that running back and steer properly using his proper technique. Go ahead, coach. So the lockout position, buzz the feet. Steer, I'm just giving a, a, obviously a slow look here. This is 6 in the morning last Friday, so um, we're trying to mimic already the fact that we've created separation. We're trying to find the ball, and we're trying to make them react to the way the ball carrier is going and then steer the proper direction. All right, then we'll have a club up and make the tackle. A couple more going. We obviously work it both ways, uh, but again, we want them to read that. Which way is he going? Steer, make the tackle. Locate, make the tackle. Okay. The third, uh, the third drill we do in the shed is uh, steer, locate, and pursue. We call it steer, locate, and pursue. What we're trying to mimic here is, let's say we steered the wrong way and the ball carrier went back that way. We want to just teach our, our linebackers that we can reroute, we're going to trail flow with proper leverage, catch the ball carrier to make the tackle, or we then add in a trail strip technique, one of our takeaways. So what we're trying to show here is, oh, he steered the wrong way, cut back, his hand movement there was securing the tackle and trail stripping. Obviously, it will be much more dynamic on the field and during practice. These guys are just kind of showing you the mechanics of the drill. Um, but again, he steers. So the running back knows on the second cue to go left, and then he knows to cut back. Again, we're trying to mimic, okay, we steered the wrong way, or it's a cut back, and uh, we want to get that linebacker to reroute himself, react, get in the play, make a tackle, or trail strip. So those are the three drills we use in our uh, uh, shed progression. All right, coach. All right, then we put it all together. There's three drills we use where we, where we combine these. The first one we call is a downhill. Um, and uh, you can show that right away, coach. What, what it essentially is, we're going to shock and shed two blockers coming at us as we move downhill and then we're going to club up to air. Okay, what we often see with this drill is these guys are going way too fast. You can see Mike's going way too fast. We want them to slow down and finish these drills. Sometimes we have a little bit more proximity, so he's trying to slow down there and just work on his technique. So all we're doing is, is mimicking coming downhill, two blockers coming at us, and um, we're going to shock and shed. The second one, downhill and locate, all we're doing is adding a tackle. So this is predetermined left or right. We work both left or right. Here, same thing. He'll have two blockers that will come at him in succession. We have the downhill shuffle, shock and shed, um, and then make a tackle. Go ahead, coach. Downhill and locate. See the third guy back there is mimicking the running back, shock and shed, shock and shed, he comes across and will tackle. Okay. 
Now, the, the running back here can be a wheel. We can use wheels if you want to use that. Uh, we'll have the running back at different angles. He may run for the edge. He may run and cut back. He may come downhill right at him. We may have the running back start at different locations behind the two blockers just to change up the drill. This is just one angle, uh, one example we're showing. And obviously we'll work this both ways. Um, and our last one is um, when we put it together, um, Coach, go to the next one, go right to the drill. Yeah, okay. This next one is turn and react. Okay, what we do in this drill, just hold it for a second there. Uh, turn and react, as is really kind of saw there, is what will happen is the, uh, the linebacker will face the two offensive guys and the coach will tell which of the two guys he wants to be the blocker, which is going to mimic the running back. So the, so the linebacker doesn't know which it is. Once that's determined, the linebacker turns around. The first cue, he buzzes his feet. The second one, he turns. Now he's got to read which one's coming at him. He's got to take him on, steer properly, and make a tap. It could be either side. So we'll give you a couple examples of this. Again, these are our graduating seniors at 6 a.m. giving us our best effort. So they're giving you good examples of what it looks like in practices. You know, we get a lot more dynamic with it, but but these drills are are uh, are ones we will use versions of these throughout the season. Maybe portions of each one based on how much indie time we have. Uh, but but there's something that we work on all the time. Again, we're trying to work on kids' hands and if you. You guys talk with a lot of college coaches, they will tell you, or they've told me anyway, that a lot of the kids in high school on defense, they just, they need to learn how to use their hands. They're, a lot of them are coached well, but the hands piece is something that, that they really got to work on. So what we try to do is try to get our kids in, in our technique-based drills to get to use their hands and use their hands properly so they get comfortable with it and, and, and hopefully become better football players. So, so that, that's, that's our shock and shed progression. Um, again, we use that throughout the year, different versions of it. We will use the spike sled for the same way without the pad with the bars, and we'll have them hold those two bars, and then they'll, they'll rotate. Uh, the, you know, they're not going to turn the, the sled, but they'll mimic the handwork with the sled. We've done that before. Sometimes we put a weight plate on it so it's a little heavier, so they've got to kind of kind of extend with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, spike sled. We don't use it that often, but we have. We like the shields because they're easier, they're quicker for setup, and they've been real effective for us. So, uh, Coach, anything else to add to our shock and shed progression? I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much covers that. Um, <coughs> what I'd like to do is introduce Coach Lidwin, and he'll give us a little discussion on some DB drills. All right, Coach. Uh, all right, uh, welcome, guys. Um, just like I'm sure a lot of your programs, uh, you know, we have about 70 guys uh, that come up for our team and uh, defensive backs, we have about 65. Um, you know, and it, it, it is really challenging. I, I teach FIED, you know, in elementary school. So my big thing is movement, keeping your kids moving. Uh, trying to coming up with drills that there's a lot of movement going on. If you're gonna do something to the right, mimic the exact same thing going to the left, and now you're using eight guys, 10 guys at the exact same time. Everybody knows what they're doing. Obviously, in the beginning of the, the, uh, the season, we go through a lot of the drills, the expectations of, of the players. Um, and the big thing is, is if you are going to be a service guy for a defensive back, you better give them a good look. All right? Nobody's going to learn anything if you're a receiver coming out at, at 50% or 40%. All right? um, so you have to be a good, you know, give them a good look, be a good scout player, and, uh, and do your job. Um, I must say, do your job 50 times a, a practice. Because you know some of the guys just they're not um, they're not following through with what their expectations are. Um, so the first thing we're gonna go through is the stance and progression. Coach can hit that. Uh, my big thing is, is is you know going through the uh, you know the high school and going into college and playing. You know there was a lot of five foot nine, hundred and sixty five pound white guys uh, playing you know college football, and they're really really good, right? Wrong. So what I had I had to learn my technique. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, I'm going up against guys that are quicker, faster, stronger. All right, so, you know, 
for me, it's an advantage to be able to teach a lot of the technical aspect of the game because that's what I had to learn to get as, as uh, you know, uh, to a higher level. Um, the first thing is, of course, uh, we go through our stance. Uh, first couple days, you know, go through the stance, making sure we, you know, continue to reiterate everything that, that, uh, uh, that I want to see. You know, uh, shoulders over toes. Um, making sure that your weight is distributed uh, per, uh, correctly, uh, you know, on the balls of your feet, and uh, making sure that you have that C curve in your back, especially if you're going to be uh, more of a, a, a jam, you know, uh, cover one type uh, uh, program. You want to have that C curve so you can take a little bit of that, uh, uh, you know, that, that force and you want to have that cushion. Um, another thing is uh, the transition forward. This is a huge one. Um, we do a lot of things when we do our progression. We do this every single day. All right? It should take, uh, with, with 65 guys going through, no. Uh, I, I usually have about, what, 20, 25 guys or so with the, with the uh, sophomores as well. Um, I can get them in lines of five or six even. And you know sometimes the quarterbacks that aren't necessarily DBs, I'll have them throw. But you know, even as the quarterbacks, I get on our quarterbacks a lot. Our coaches that are there, they just stand there and they just throw the ball. I, I want them to get the ball up high. I want them to give them a good look for everything that we're doing. Um, so the first one that we do, it's just a transition uh, going backwards to forwards, uh, buzzing the feet. So as you're coming here, buzz, 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 and then coming forward. Um, I try. I heard uh, a, a buddy of mine who was uh, uh, playing at Oshkosh a couple years ago, but that their uh, their defensive back coach expected them at the very end to club up, and and so we tried that a little bit this year, and a lot of our varsity kids continued on all the way until the very last practice of the season doing that. Um, you know, I was on them, but you know, a lot of kids were forgetting, and a lot of times, if I'm looking this way, I don't see what's going on here. But again, you really want to make sure that you're you're consistent all the way through. Uh, another one's a 45 degree. Um, my big thing is this one. Um, you know, is that bucket step? I don't know if you guys uh, teach this or not, but I like when I'm when I'm transitioning forward on a 45 degree that I'm already actually turning my hips. Uh, while I'm buzzing my feet and then I'm coming forward, it makes it for a lot easier transition um, and you're not slipping, uh, getting those excuses, oh, the, the ground was wet. All right, well, get your, get your hips underneath you, okay? Uh, the 90 degree, everything that we do now from this point on is exaggerated, all right? So our 90 degree, I really want that hip to open up, all right? Point to where you're going. Um, a lot of the kids, you know, they're, they're throwing that elbow and opening up. They get that knee up high. Uh, when they're opening up on their back, uh, their, their deep 45, you know, again, really exaggerating getting to that angle. Um, our post corner turns, um, I give them, I, when we go in both directions, I, I let them do it two different ways. And I, I don't really necessarily care which one they go first. But if they're going to do that post corner uh, zone turn, and it's here, okay, perfectly fine. Um, but then when we do our wheel turn, um, where you're opening here, then it's a turn this way. And going on that angle. I rarely, rarely ever use cones for this because the kids just start looking for them. All right? This, again, it should be a real quick progression getting through. Uh, and then we have the, uh, it's called pass, uh, run pass, I'm sorry, pass, run pass. It's also called our oh shit drill, um, which I am the first coach to actually cuss now in this uh, group. Uh, our oh shit drill is you go back on your pass. You come up on the run, oh shit, and then you turn, and then you get the ball well, past your over. Stop using shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know we want the ball to come right down into their, uh, uh, right over their shoulder. Um, again, this should take. Uh, we use this for our pregame. Uh, we do this for uh, our, our, our four or five minutes it takes. Uh, when we have our JV games, our, our seniors and juniors are usually done within three or four minutes of this. Um, once they start getting really good, then we move on. Um, you know, maybe just one direction. We don't have to do both directions all the time. Um, Coach, you can move on. All right, so my, uh, my blue highlighted area here was uh, supposed to be uh, a drill ran by the Wisconsin Badgers a couple years ago. We went to their practice, and uh, you know, I brought my phone out and started filming. Um, what this is, it's, a, it's called the Badger Stock and Fill Drill. All right, um, Coach, you can, you can hit this though. The idea is what we're doing here is here's our corner. Right now he's got an outside leverage. I want the guys locked up right away on the receivers just to simulate it. You have two running backs, two running backs, and then our, our safety is in the back here, okay? Uh, if the, the corner is always reading the first running back, okay? Always reading the first uh, move of the running back. Coach, you can hit it here. He's going to get off of the stock, 
coming inside because that's where the guy is, and then the guy is filling to the uh, the safety is filling to the outside. He uh, gets off of his uh, receiver, and then safety comes up on the outside linebacker. Uh, I'm sorry, off the uh, the running back to the outside. The idea for this particular drill is uh, now he's on an inside release. Okay, so he should release a little bit differently. Coach, go ahead. Okay, so now the running back comes to the outside. He's reading the first running back. He releases, tries to get to the outside. And now the safety comes. He's supposed to be coming up on number two. Uh, both, both, both running backs have the ball. Now, again, like I talked about, we want to maximize our movement. So I would run this drill because it takes, you know, two running backs, a corner, and a safety. All right, let's, let's do it on the other side, too. So there's not a whole lot of uh, standing around, okay? All right, Coach, go ahead. Now, this, all this is doing is showing uh, the receiver, uh, the defensive back is now on the outside. He cuts in, and now he's making the move. The safety's got to fill, uh, you know, again, uh, filling now to the outside. All right, Coach, that's good. All right, three-choice drill. What this drill is, it's, it's, I'm sure you guys have probably done something like this. You got your quarterback who I usually, if it's, if it's me, again, I've got to show proper technique. I want to get that pad height uh, of the ball for the quarterback. I want to give the guys a good look, okay? This type of crap, does, I, I don't like it. it, it it's, you really don't get much of a look from your, for, your, uh, for your DBs that way. So I'm standing about four or five yards off of the quarterback as a DB. I've got a coach here who is either a dummy or a player. All right. Usually we have uh, usually we have a player there, and he's going to just catch the ball. Um, but the idea is, and he can actually be spread out a little bit further. Um, I have three choices. I can either uh, intercept, I can uh, pass break, or I can uh, I can tackle. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to intercept it if it's early, if I'm early. I'm going to pass break if it's I'm not sure, and I'm going to tackle if I'm really late. So if I'm going to uh, break here. Quarterback's now going to open, and if he's going to open this way, I'm over-exaggerating, and I'm going to beeline right to my receiver. I have to uh, predict where that ball is going to be, if the ball is going to be early. All right, I'm here, and I'm clubbing up. All right, obviously, we want them to come in controlled. I don't, you know, if it's a dummy, obviously, we want them to tackle. All right, um, we've had wheels before, too. We wheel it out, and they, they do the, uh, they, they tackle on that as well. But if we're just, you know, hey, let's get this going. It's a quick drill. We want to just club up then you guys rotate. If, it's, uh, if, if we're going to pass break, of course, I'm coming here, and now I'm coming in front, but I've got to get that arm around, of course, and try to pass break this way. And then, of course, interception, same thing. I want to uh, break open, and then jump in front and intercept the ball. So, three choice drill. Um, again, if you want, uh, you can have both sides. Um, you know, two defensive backs right next to each other, both of them break out. Um, but having one guy at a time, they can't anticipate what direction they're going. All right, next drill, coach. All right, modified W drill. Um, modified W drill, I kind of came up with because I was kind of sick and tired of the, the defensive backs going five yards, coming up, five yards, going back, okay? So what I did was I, I turned around and just put it at different levels, all right? Maybe a five yard, then come up at three, come back all the way to seven, come back up to two, back again, so, Coach, you can hit this one. And what they're trying to do then is they're also trying to locate the next cone. So when they're back kind of far, then they're going to, uh, uh, they can see what the next cone is. Uh, on the last one, I, uh, I send them on either a bail or, or uh, opening your hips. So as Peter uh, comes up here, he's opening and he's getting to that last cone. Same thing there, Stefan's going to break and get to the last cone. I just felt that they get really complacent standing at that five yard mark. They know where it is. Eventually, you know, I, I, you know when I used to do it, I'd go, just let's use the line. You know what's there. You don't have to look for it. Or if there's a cone there, you know what's there. Go to four if you need to, okay? Uh, but again, the idea is, uh, you know, one guy gets to the second cone. I'm sure you guys have done it too. Uh, when you got a couple different, uh, you got a couple guys, a couple uh, cones in front of the guy. The next guy goes, and I can get through the whole line in you know under under a minute. Um, I 
believe, Coach, can you go to the next one? I believe, uh, oh, that, I, that's it. Thank you. You know, let's, yeah, we'll, we'll just cover this real quick and then we'll transition with Coach John wanted to. Uh, beyond those drills, there's a couple other things we wanted to share with you. This will go over real quick. This is just an example. You guys probably all have the same thing. We all, we all do this. This is just an example of, of our defensive goals we set for each game. The ones in red are the ones over the last four years that each successive year we've got better at achieving more often. So we obviously have work to do on uh, 1, 3, 5, 8, 9, and 11 um, to continue to get better, but these are just examples of, of, of our goals that we have, and, and they, they may vary from year to year. Uh, we make any adjustments on the numbers or feel one's better or worse, but uh, that just gives you an example of of, of what we have out there, and I'm sure you know all of us in this room have, have the same similar concept. Uh, the other other thing I wanted to share with you guys, or we did as a staff, besides the indie drills, you know, in a drill-based concept, is, is our our uh, our ideas and, and concepts we institute each practice in pursuit. Um, many times at our school, we are uh, are average to undersized. We've been fortunate to have some size on defense the last two years, but that's the exception more than the rule. So like, like all of us in here, we understand the importance of pursuit and pursuit properly. And, and I was always looking for different ways to do pursuit drills and we did a number of different ones. So Coach John over here who's got a wellspring of, of experience and, and loves researching these things, we, we gave him and he volunteered to be kind of our pursuit coach. We researched some different ways we could institute pursuit uh, drills and how we could advance them into different individual skills and drills for our defense. So I'll let John use the board to kind of talk about some of our pursuit drills. Okay, thanks coach. Um, I was given the opportunity to either decide to be the coach or volunteer, so it was real simple. I volunteered. Uh, but what we did is every practice we have a session of five to seven minutes of pursuit. It can come at any time in practice. It can come right after we loosen up. It can come in the middle. We can come at the end if we have to, but there's always a pursuit drill that we incorporate with our practice. So what I'm going to do here is I drew it up on the board for you, very simple. Here is the goal post, here is the goal line. Coach, me standing there facing, and we put the kids in groups of sixes, and they have to come out. Everybody does this. Soccer, all, everybody that's on varsity that practices all partakes in the pursuit drill. So no matter where it is, everybody's getting their running. Okay, so what we do is we set this up very simply. Six guys, they all come out, they're about five to six yards behind, facing me. And I will say, set, go. They will chop in place. I will blow the whistle. They will hit the ground. And then we'll have on either sideline, either six or three cones, depending. For the first initial drill, we have six cones. And what they will do is they will take off from their positions that I point to and wind up at one of these cones. They cannot line up behind coach. You miss the drill, we do it over again. Everybody has to find their own cone. So when we do that, everybody's chop, 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 whistle, boom, they spread and they don't follow each other. They all go to a separate cone, okay? After we do that, one day, the next day we'll come back, we'll break it off this way, okay, and we'll put the six again, and they'll come out in groups of sixes, and now we'll have three cones on each side. And what we'll do is we'll do the same thing, we'll chop in place, they'll run, they will get to the cone, but before they do that, they will cross. This gentleman goes to this cone, this gentleman to that cone, and so on and so forth down the line. The first day we do it, it's great because everybody bumps in, everybody, and you're running, the yelling, the coaches are screaming. But after the second or third time we do it, they are positioned because now they're talking to us. I got first, I got second, you got the third, you take that one, I got this one. Watch where you're going. So the kids are not only communicating, which, hmm, football communication, no, we don't want to do that. But now they're running, they're not hesitating, okay? Because most of us all do the 11 people in line. You step and we all run over here to this cone and I'm over here and everybody's bumping in each other. Now we're getting reps in five to seven minutes where the teams, the whole team, everybody's moving together and we got a good run. They got a good workout in five to seven minutes 
every day with pursuit. Well, then the last one we added, this was kind of Coach Sean's idea. The third one that we do is we line up in the same position. Again, kids are creatures of habit. You might as well keep them in that situation. So we line them up in six. We'll now cross them on the set. But now we've added the tackle wheels. And they love this. By the middle of the last year, they were flying at those things. They were running so damn fast to get there to tackle that wheel. And the coaches were having fun. They are just wheeling those suckers out there. And we're going right and we're going left. So we not only got our tackling in, we got our agilities in, and we had some fun with the kids. And after each practice, they said, that was fun. We can do that tomorrow. Well, no, we got to change it up a little bit. We can't keep doing the same thing. Coach, just so you yeah, I mean, we'll have a coach at each cone. These are spaced about five yards apart. Sometimes we'll have, like Coach said, six all to one side, six to the other side, or we'll have three and three. But then some, some of these will have a wheel. Some we may have a shield where they got to club up to a shield. Uh, some we then may roll a ball out, and they've got to recover a ball. So we're kind of com combining uh, not only pursuit drills, pursuit concepts, with some tackle concepts, with some turnover concepts. So it, it, that, that variety has, has helped us a lot, and, and as Coach has said, has, it, it has really gotten us to get the kids, you know, get, they get enthused about it as opposed to just kind of going through the motions that we're trying to mimic and get them to communicate too, is don't follow the same path. You know, proper pursuit angles to the ball, um, and then again, we all incorporate these different things, and Coach has done a great job with it, so. And, and you get the captains yelling at the kids who are kind of sitting in the background that don't want to run. You know, you got those, everybody's got those on the team, you know. So they're pushing them forward. Everybody gets their turn. Everybody's out there in the sixes, and everybody's moving, you know, and everybody's moving, so you, you keep the continuity. And in five, six, seven minutes, we're done, and we're on to our next thing, either offense or defense or special teams. So you're not taking a lot of time out of your practice, fellas, okay? You can afford to do that in your time frame, and I'm sure you're like we are. We're all time. Everybody has their sessions and so on and so forth, but this doesn't take any time away from, from any of our stuff. You know, so that is something that we've incorporated and that's something that we, we have found to be very successful for us. And we've gotten quicker over the past three years. And I think a lot of this has to do with what we are doing in practice. Uh, read a book a long time ago. Uh, we try to teach our kids how to practice. And if they like doing this stuff, they're going to practice at it. And they enjoy it, and they'll come to practice to do it that way. So that's part that we wanted to add. Coach wanted us to kind of mention that a little bit about what we do with our pursuit. Uh, we wanted to show you our defensive philosophy as far as what we do. Um, if there are any questions, we have a few minutes that we can maybe yeah. ask. Or if yeah. we can... if anybody's got any questions, please feel free. I mean, we're all football coaches. If there isn't, isn't that's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll be here till, uh, till after lunch. So if anybody does have some questions, they can ask us again. There's our information. Matt Kern's our head coach. He does a great job. Um, and there's all of our, our email addresses. Um, you know, we're fortunate. We, we have a really good cohesive staff. We enjoy coaching together. Uh, we're at a, at a great school. Uh, and we got good kids and good families. So we're in a real fortunate situation. And uh, we, we sure enjoy doing this together as coaches. So if there's anything we can ever help you with, you think, that'd be great. I mean, we certainly ask for help all the time. We're always looking to get better. And, I'm sorry, go ahead, Coach. So on this pursuit drill, on that first coach sitting on that circle there, uh, Cole, I'm not going to be that coach. I'm going to be another coach over on the, yeah, and I have a wheel. Um, and I'm doing something. Which way am I rolling the wheel? How is that working exactly, I guess? What would be an example? Example would be, let's say we're doing that cross drill. So they're, they're chopping their feet, they hit the ground, and they know they're going to they're gonna angle this way, okay? So they know they're going to one of these three. So let's say you're the coach right here. You got the kid coming here. You're probably going to angle the wheel this way, okay? Or I may angle it this way, or I may wait till he gets four feet from me and then go that way. So he's got to redirect. But I'll usually work it in this direction. If this coach has got a wheel, he'll work it in this direction. So work a little bit in concert, so it's going to be that kind of a bend to it, so we don't have any collisions. I don't think like we've that. ever done the wheel with six guys on one side. Sure. Yeah. Well, we'll often it's great usually point. three. Yeah. yeah, we may have a wheel, uh, a wheel and a ball, uh, a shield. A lot of times, or, or that club up thing, they'll just come to air, and they, what we'll do is 
is, is they'll come, if, if a coach doesn't have anything, they'll come to the cone, our term is to come to balance, break down, whatever term it is, so we'll come to balance, they're going to come to balance before the cone, and so they have control of their body and then club up to give us an air, you know, that air tackle, just so they're, they're finishing the drill with some sort of concept. So, I mean, the pursuit drill could finish in any of four different ways, a dummy, a shield, uh, a ball, a club up, um, you know, four or five things. And, and the first time we ran it, Coach, is uh, I didn't have the wheels, but I put on one side wheels and one side nothing. Everybody wanted to go to the side where the wheels were because they were having more fun. So then we had to incorporate the wheels <laughs> so we could, you know, tackle and bring a football. And then we got the, the, the shields and everything else. And then it was fine because then they didn't know what they were going to get. So they had to adjust to like, like in a game situation, phone ball, club up, whatever, you know. So you had four different things for them to look at. So uh, it's been good for us. And I'll keep researching, look for other things that we can add to it and uh, go from there. I usually was one of the guys on the sideline, and uh, you know, if, if if we had a group of six coming through, and, and I was one of the coaches that didn't have a ball, and all it was is club up. But man, this is bullshit. And they literally were getting upset that they weren't getting, uh, you know, a ball or a wheel or a shield. Yeah. So that's why we changed it when we went forward. Everybody, so, anything else? Yes. For the hand placement on linebacker yeah. drills, do you teach half man, full man? I think I, maybe I missed it, but you know, where yeah, do you we, we, yeah, we will. But that that relates to our, our gap. We're in our single gap defense. So yes, we will play half a man or, or, or attack the half a man. What we're trying to do here, it just in drill work, it is is work on hand placement at, at that uh, that spacing and just working on the mechanics of the drill. But to your point, yes, yeah, I mean it's going to be. You, you know, shoulder and, uh, and chest play. Yeah, we want to play half a man. Anything else?